We're back with another episode. <laughs> nah, let me stop playing. We're back with another episode. We're back with another episode of Rick. What a week, right y'all? What a friggin' week. Okay, I had a decent week. This weekend is technically my birthday weekend. My birthday is on Wednesday. And I will be turning 15, so that's always good. Like, oh my God, I'm like only 15. It's crazy. <laughs> OMG, imagine, bitch. I don't know how old I am anyway these days. Shit. Like... Once I turn 27, I'm I'm not even trying to be funny. I really stop keeping up with my age. Like, I always forget if I'm 28, 27, or 29. Like, I, I've been 29 for two years now. So, at this point, I'm probably like 15, 12. I could be 12, bitch. Just, just young and full of enthusiasm and energy, bitch. I, I am... I could be 15, 16. Maybe I'm 18. I don't know. I don't care. It's like, I'm 29. And, I mean, hey, it is what it is. Like, life is life, you know? Just keep walking on this journey and progressing and seeing what comes out of it. That that was too much. That was too much. But it's the truth, though. But, yeah, my family came over. My mom, my dad, my brother, my sister-in-law. Obviously, Ray was here. He lives here. <laughs> How you say? He was here as well. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I did a little that, and I had a really, you know, I'm not big on material things, but you know, they pulled through this year with the gifts, and I'm just here for it, and it's not even my birthday yet, so, um, I'm happy, not the best year, but a pretty decent birthday, must I say, but, you know, I gotta talk about election, you know I gotta talk about the election, bitch. Whew. Get hell, honey. Get hell. It was day three for me. When I woke up on day three, and we still didn't have a candidate, not a candidate, a winner, I said, this country is too much. It's just too much. Like, I, like why? Why? We've been through enough. I feel like the, the country was taking advantage of us. They said we had the people stay in their house for three to five months. They're accustomed to waiting. We're not. We're not doing the waiting no more. Like, that was ridiculous. And, and, and the counting the ballot thing is just ghetto. When I was watching the news and I see these people just counting, I'm like, what is this? What is this? Like, for real. For real. Y'all need to stop. They just sitting there just, just counting the ballots. Stop. For real. Yeah, they need to find a way for us to vote online, on our phones. I was one of the people who were against that. But then I had an epiphany. Like, the biggest hacker ever is the government. The government is the one that be hacking us, motherfucker. How, how, the government is scared of their own self. That's why they don't want to do internet voting. How you scared of your own self? That's how untrustworthy you are. The government is the biggest hacker of the world. They should have the best hacking protection system in the world because they're the biggest hacker in the fucking world. Okay? And when I answer my phone, hello, by the time I get off the phone, they're going to say, hi, do you need a new cell phone provider, bitch? Like, like, no. No. Y'all need to come up with a better system. Because I, when I see these people talking about it, I just, I can't. We gotta do better. It's 2020. It is not 1945. Like, stop. So, it was day three for me. Then, by day, I don't know which day it was. I think day two when they said um, Joe Biden had 246 and Trump had 213, 14, I think. I knew Biden won in my head. You know, I was just like, all right, Biden won. Like, it is what it is. But I just, you know, we all wanted to hear it. Or whatever the case may be. But, um, you know, looking back, I'm not surprised. I did think Trump was going to win. But now looking forward or thinking about it, I realize, you know, a lot of us were not proud Biden voters. So, 
Trump voters, they were proud to vote for Trump for whatever reason. And I kept seeing all these Trump pen signs and Trump 2020 and seeing them on the news and, and seeing them do these, 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 I don't even know. What was that incident when it was in LA? Just like out like Trump 2020. Like I've seen stuff even in New York City. It's, they, they claim the city is so liberal, but I've seen a lot of Trump 2020 behavior out here. So when I kept seeing that, I was like, it's a wrap. And I forgot, you know, the term. What, what do they say? They say the loudest. They say a lot about the loudest person in the room. I'm pretty loud. And a lot of those facts are not true about me. But they say, like, the loudest person in the room is the dumbest. Or the loudest person in the room is the pussiest. It's, it's another one. But I forgot that the people who sometimes show both the most, you know, they don't really got it figured out. And what happened, I think, with the, the with Biden's votes were... A lot of us, a lot of people wasn't saying they were voting for Biden, but we was going to vote for him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't a big Biden supporter. I damn sure wasn't a Trump supporter. And, um, but I still voted for Biden because at the end of the day, they put our back up against the wall. And I'm, I still feel some type of way about my back being up against the wall. You feel me? Um, I also feel like people was just tired this year. Like, with COVID... It was just too much. Like, I think Trump was just, just, just fucking with everybody. Like, he was starting to get to us. Like, I think, like, the Biden voters was like a quiet storm. Like, every time he would watch the news or every time Trump would say a tweet, he was like, you know what? Let me register the vote because this ain't going to work. This is not going to work. Like, I think every little thing, he was like, he only pays seven fifty in taxes? Okay. Keep fucking with me. Keep fucking with me, Trump. Okay. Okay. Like, I think it's just like, everything was just getting to us. You telling the people who to drink Clorox? Okay. Okay. Like, I feel like, we, like, people was just tired of Trump. Like, I think it was just a lot. Then he put the kids in the cage, separate kids from the parents. You know, I know for me, even though I voted for Biden, because I, 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 I put on social media that I voted in the, um, the absentee ballot. I voted for Biden before this incident happened, but I know the icing on the cake for me, bitch. The, the, the whipped cream on the macchiato. For me, personally, was when he um, talked about um, Joe Biden's son being on drugs on the debate. Because I just felt like that was ghetto, tasteless, out of control. It was just a lot. And I just feel like this is a presidential debate. Like, these are not things we're accustomed to. Like, what what was the, the point of him doing? Like, you don't talk about people's kids. Talk about this man's son. This this not a child. And then you already know Joe Biden been through a lot. He done lost the wife. He lost the son. Now you talking about the son being on, on, on cocaine or something. And I understood why Trump brought it up. But it's the way you bring up things. Like, you could have just been like, oh, you use government money for family affairs. And I'm quite sure we would have did our research. But you don't say that, you know. I ain't gonna front, though, when, when Twitter put it into context, Black Twitter, and somebody wrote, did Trump just call this man's son a crackhead? I was like, yo, the internet is savage. But for me, I felt like that this, that's not a president. That's not a person. That's not a human being. And I know some of y'all like, that's your icing on the cake? Yes, bitch. I said what I said. That was my icing on the cake. It was. Some people like it was y'all icing on the cake should have been when he decided to get the GOP and then when he didn't wear a mask and shot kiss my ass. Dead ass. I'm so happy this election is over and I'm so happy Biden won too. Just so y'all like all these fake political people could sit down. Like, oh, oh Lord. Jesus. But yeah, that was the icing on the cake for me. Um, what else? Um I just think, you know, a lot of people were tired and we didn't know how much people were going to vote for Biden because we didn't know who was voting for Biden. Nobody was saying who they was voting for. Everybody was being so vague because, it, it, like people were saying, it's the lesser of the two evils. So it's like, you, you show something off that you're proud of. Like, the time Obama ran, people wanted an Obama sticker. You wanted to wear an Obama pin or whatever way you express who you vote for. When Biden, with Biden, we was kind of like, from when he came in the game, we was kind of like, what? Like, what's goody? Like, 
Like we wasn't really like it wasn't something I was proud to say, but I knew I had to do. Does that make sense? And it took a lot to get me to that point to feel like let me go vote. I'm gonna be honest. Some of y'all wanna come on here on social media and act like I understand the importance of voting and da 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 da. A lot of us was in our bag. Let's keep it a buck. A lot of us was in our bag. Dad didn't want to vote. We felt like Biden and Trump was the same person and we felt hopeless. I was in my bag and then I was like, you know, I'm going to vote or whatever. Because it was, it was a variety of things. Um, but he, he, I think that's what we forgot was one, how much people was probably tired of Trump. Not just the American people, but pol politicians like the Electoral College voted Trump out. You know, look, imagine how many people he pissed off in, 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 in his field, you know. Um, so I think that's definitely one of the top reasons why Trump lost. And he just wasn't a president, you know. Was he funny sometimes? Yeah. But he definitely wasn't doing his job. I don't even, and I'm, and I'm, I'm one of those people, you know, like, I do think it's weird to see Trump supporters, but you know, whatever, whatever you like. But I, I, I couldn't understand what everything that went on this year, how somebody felt comfortable voting for Trump. You know, the best thing that came out of him was $1,200, honestly. And that's not even a lot of money. It's like cheese, you feel me? First time, let me stop, because you know, you know, y'all so, everybody's so sensitive, bitch. Um... Yeah, so, you know, Joe Biden's the next president. Shout out to Kamala Harris, first female VP. And the first female VP is the Belek in Jamaica, must I add. And, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm hoping to see some change because I'm finna get all in that ass. You feel me? Like, all in that ass. Joe Biden and Kamala. Because I, I'm here for Kamala, but six. Then I heard she went to Howard. She an AKA. So, what's up? So, yeah, it's it's good, you know. I'm happy with the results of the election. And it, it, it just made me feel like, okay, this country got a little bit of sense. Just a little, little bit of sense. Because I was thinking, child, I was thinking the world was finna end, bitch. I ain't tell nobody. <laughs> but it was looking like, it was looking shaky out here. It still is, but you know. All we can do is see, you know. That's all we could do. It does give you a little hope. When I say a little, I mean, you see how small that hope is? So, we'll see. Um, yeah, so, I had to come up here and, you know, talk about the election. It's, it's inevitable. You can't, you know, not, not talk about it. Especially because it took so long. The anticipation was killing us. And... Yeah, but as you know, last week we talked about the pros and the cons of being committed and this week we will be talking about the pros and the cons of being single, single and in this kind of world, I'm glad I got my Explain your mind because uh, this topic is a, a continuation of last week's topic. And if you guys haven't streamed that, go stream it on Spotify, SoundCloud, who else? iHeartRadio. Or you could just go watch if you're watching on YouTube. Definitely go check out my channel. I'll link it in the description box below. And yeah, um, so let's let's you know jump into it so i think it is a beauty in being single you know um i got um a little red wine 
I think it's a beauty in being single. You know, it's this form of independence that you have when you're single and the love of variety um, that you get when you're single. You have so much variety, so much choices. And I know that that sounds mad out of pocket in a way to say that. Like, oh, you have mad variety, mad choices. But you do, you know. Um, you're dating. You're on the apps. You're going well before, you know, COVID. You, you get to go out and party. You get to go to brunches and meet guys and talk to guys. And or whomever who's watching and whoever you date. You get to do all of that. And um, it's fun. Dating, dating could be exhausting. But it can also be fun because that dating, that first phase of dating when you, y'all know what I'm talking about, the first phase when you just start talking to a guy and everything seems so perfect and you guys are like, ah, all lusty over each other, is a really good feeling, you know. Um, I feel like that's one of the top things of, you know, dating. Especially if you, you know, you, you really good at dating. Some girls be dating like juggling 10, 5, 10 different men, bitch. And just that feeling, you know, like, well, people are committed to do it too. Because I know, you know, I get temptations if I see a fine man. <laughs> but it, I'm quite sure when you single, it's different. Like, it's like a, mm, I'm going to get you, I'm going to eat you up. Because you like you're single, you 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 civilized. Like you you're not you're not bound by anything, you know. So that feeling when you see somebody fine, oh, oh, you just like yes, it's different. So I think that's one of the dope things, you know, of being committed is having options, and that feeling of you know new. Lust, because I don't want to say love, because every guy you date, you obviously don't fall in love with. But the feeling of lust can be good. Some people could say that that feeling is not always good. Lust is a sin. Uh, lust is unhealthy. It can be toxic, right? You know, constantly falling in lust. And um, I don't know. I think you know, falling in love. I mean, falling in love. Falling in lust has its perks, has its ups, has its downs. But ultimately, it can be dope, right? But this is where we get into what do we hate about being single. And the top common thing that people hate about being single is that sometimes you get lonely, you know? Um, Especially with social media and I'm learning things too now that I've been through certain things that how we always talk about this but oh my god but um you know how sometimes you like you might be dating you might be having fun but then you go on the internet you might see somebody you know getting married or having kids or doing things it might get to you. So, today you might go on a date and then you have mad fun. But then you go on the internet and you see somebody cut up with they move that they move for five years. And it's just like, ugh. Even though you had mad fun on that date or whatever the case may be, you still kind of desire commitment sometimes, you know. Um, and I feel with society and not just society, what I feel with society and religion and things because that the idea of marriage has been so instilled in our head until things change you'll always at some point desire commitment when you're single and that's probably the most sucky part about being single because you feel like em and is the way the way that I'm living is it wrong? Especially as you get older, like you feel like me being single is this wrong? What's wrong with me? But even when you happy, like even when somebody on your line, you're like, 
why I can't keep a man? Why I can't, you know, why Why am I single? Like, you always have that question mark in your head when you're single. And I think that's one of the top most annoying things of being single is you, you get that question mark all the time. And it's like, it's not even really you. Sometimes, you know, let's, let's be honest. Sometimes it might be us, you know. And not even a something is wrong with you type of thing. Like, you're not dateable. You're not... I'm saying in a sense of your mental health. Have you done the work? Are you dealing with some demons uh, from past relationships? And that could be a past boyfriend. That could be your father. That could be from your mother. That could be from your, your deacon, your pastor. It could be from anybody. Um, and sometimes those things do tie into why, you know, you still might be single or whatever the case may be. And um, I think that's the top most annoying thing of being single is that because of the norms of society, you feel like by a certain age, or even not even by a certain age, you feel like commitment is key. Even sometimes having a boyfriend to some people is something you should always have, you know, at a young age. Because sometimes we don't promote young marriage, but we promote a woman in a relationship, right? More than we promote singleness, right? Because... Some people like to correlate singleness with promiscuity. promiscuity I, think, I think I'm saying it right. They like to correlate those two. So let's say your family is super religious and they see you single. They're thinking like, is she out here slanging her coochie and stuff? You know, go settle down, go find you a man and sling your coochie one way. Unless you're super religious, no slanging coochie at all. Hello, good morning. So I think that sometimes, you know, um, that's one of the, like the top annoying things with being single. And, and I think that's one of the top annoying things being single. When you're single, people want to um, correlate that with sluttiness and whoriness because you're dating a bunch of guys and because you're not in a committed relationship. Who said I was having sex with all these men that I'm dating, number one? Number two, if you're having sex and you're having protective sex using condoms, using protection, I, I personally, and this could be debatable, I don't think that you a slut. <laughs> I don't. Like, if you're really out here protecting yourself and you doing the nasty, like, and you are uh, you on birth control too and you using protection... And you're taking all the necessary steps to prevent yourself from getting STDs or having an accidental pregnancy. How, how are you a slut? Sex is cool. Sex feels good. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like, too, sometimes girls, too, are committed. And that's why one of the top reasons why I'm so happy that I waited so long to... Well, DK, right? Because some people might say I'm still young. To settle down because you get to see things in a different lens. And um, I do think that sometimes girls, when they like those girls who are always in relationships all the time, they're in different relationships, they always got a boyfriend or whatever the case may be, they don't understand the single lifestyle. And to not understand what it's like to be single is a troublesome road. Because being single is dope, you know. And just understanding, like, this is not who I'm going to be with. This person doesn't make me happy. This is not who I like, you know, is dope. At least to me, you know. Um, and um, I, I just don't like that sometimes being single comes with that stigma. Also, in general, being single comes with a lot of stigmas, unlike being committed. Co being committed or being married doesn't come with much stigma. It's just like, oh, she's married. Oh, she has a man. Whatever. It's, it's not really a stigma behind that. But when you're single, it comes with, oh, she's single. Oh, she's not dateable. Sometimes, oh, she's miserable. Or if you're having a bad day, that's because she ain't got no man. She mad. No, I'm just mad today. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, when you're a female and you're single, it's just like, ugh. When you get mad, they like, she must ain't getting no dick lately. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just comes with so much stigma when you're single. And, um, I think that's one of the most annoying things is the stigmas. And just, you know, you often feel lonely. You know, I remember being single 
sometimes I would feel lonely. And what that does, when you start feeling lonely, you start dating stupid, right? You start going for anything when you start feeling lonely. Um, and that's why single, being single could get tricky because your, your emotions start playing with you. And you might go back to an ex or you might date somebody you don't even really want to date. And it's like, being single, you have to be so strategic. And I don't want to make dating seem like this project, but you really do. You got to make sure and know your emotions. Like, you got to remind yourself sometimes, like, okay, whomever. Like, okay, Lisa, you know you don't like that boy. You just a little desperate right now. You just a little horny right now. Like, don't go do nothing you don't need to do. Like, it's like one of those type of situations with singleness, you have to constantly, you know, remind yourself to chill. <laughs> like, realistically, like, it, it, unless you, I mean, not constantly, but sometimes, right? Um, and if you don't play your cards right, you might have too much fun being single. I think you could have a lot of fun being single though when you're young. And what is young? I don't know anymore these days. Um, When should you be married? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, And it's all about you. Like, I, I, I wonder if it's like, I would love, these are the times when I miss having a guest on the show. I would love to like meet a person who wants to be single. Like you know those people who I I, I don't always believe everybody though cuz you know how those people that's like I really never want to get married like I never want to be in a relationship like I just like dating like I I like meeting people. I work off energy. I work off vibes. Like yes. Like I I believe there's some people like that. Some people I think just blind, but I would love to meet a person who just wants to be single um and who doesn't want to you know um be in a relationship it is definitely a market for that and i'm and when i say single i mean single not somebody who doesn't want to get married because not wanting to get married and not wanting to be in a relationship is two different things because you could want to be in a relationship but never want to marry that person i mean somebody who legitimately never wants to be committed like that would be dope to um see and it, it is a market for that right um not everyone you know desires marriage or desires desires um commitment um let me see can I listen to my eyes? I don't know if I believe that um so I think People who are single are truly happy. That's a trick question because it depends on the person, you know. Um, does this person want to be single? There's people who are actually single who will openly say, I want to be in a relationship. I want to be married. That's different. But then there's people who are single and they're not really desiring to be, you know, married or in a relationship. Uh, so I don't know. Do I believe that commitment is like the, the 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 end goal always and should be? Um see that see with me I'm so different that I feel like th that question kind of correlates with purpose my uh podcast episode um I, I do in some ways think only because let me tell you what's the key factor creating life right I think that when because men and women you know they create life or whatever the case may be or however you bring a kid into the world I think by creating a family because relationships come with creating a family, whether you adopt or whatever you decide to surrogate. Because of that factor, I, I do believe a family should be together as one. It should be, you when you want to start a family, it should be somebody you want to be long term with. 
And I think that is a key factor in commitment being the end goal is when you want to start a family. Even though sometimes, you know, you might start a family with somebody and you think that they are the end goal. They are the person you want to do that to us part and things don't work out. But at least when you decided, made that decision in your head, you thought it was going to work out. And that's why I think, because I think most of the time too, even when you, most of the time, even when you accidentally get pregnant by someone, like when you, when you're not even married or nothing at all, when you just dating somebody, you kind of really fuck with that person. But maybe he doesn't with you or whatever. Maybe it's not a matchup. But um, things happen, you know. I think that starting a family makes commitment the end goal. Um, but it's a hard pill to swallow. And that's that's this is the stuff that's triggering when you're single. I think because of society, the biggest con of being single is your mental health. Because society pushes on us to get committed, to get married, to start a family, to have the white picket fence. When you're single, you barely can have fun. You're always constantly thinking about, is this my husband? Is this the one? Is da -da 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 like, because of the norms of society. Um, and sometimes you can't even have fun, you know, dating, which sucks. Like, it's always over there in the corner of your mind committing but I like I said I think being single comes with so much fun like I remember just being single and just like you know it's a sort of freeness and funness that comes with being single and it's just like less responsibility like when you commit it sometimes you have me and laundry you got a cup. If you have kids, now y'all got kids. It's like more money. Like, I was thinking the other day too. Like, when we do the laundry, I run out of the detergent mad quick. And it's just only two of us. And like, I don't get it. Like, I understand two people is a lot of clothes, but should it really diminish the detergent that quick? Like, honestly. Like, I don't know. I just be thinking about random things. Like, you know, when I was single, like, groceries would last me dumb long. Then family, he just be eating mad food, and he say, and he's so thin. If I ate how he ate, I would be on my six hundred pound life. And it's just like, like certain things we don't respect about being single. It's just like, just focusing on you, like you, you, you the everything, honey. You just the apple of the world. You the apple of your eye. Like you feed you. You do your laundry. You go out and you make yourself happy. You pay your own bills. You, 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 you. It's literally you, 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 you. Like, you can be your own little narcissist in a healthy way, right? Like, it's all about you. Like, that's dope. Like, come on. Like, let's get into it. Like, I think a lot of people don't realize the stress that comes with having a worry about you and someone else and especially if you build a family you worrying about your partner and your child you know making sure everybody good you know all you gotta worry about is that you good and and some people call that selfish and self-love is a form of selfishness but one of the best ones you know how they say one of the best i want to say i don't I, don't quote me one of the best depths are student loan debt well back in the day and I would say maybe home loan if you know how to pay it right, right? I feel like that with singleness, you know? One of the best selfish, this, one of the best ways to be selfish is self-love. Like, that's the only healthy selfish behavior is self-love. Like, ain't no other one. Like, and until I got in a deep relationship, I didn't realize, like, dang, like, ugh, the the amount of work it comes with you know what i'm saying like so i think definitely just basking in you is one of the biggest pros of being single is that you literally could just bask in you 
Like all you worried about is you. And, and I'm telling you, as you get older, you don't you forget that. Like now I'm even talking about. It, I'm like, dang! Remember when I just had to worry about me? Damn, the good days. And I still got it good, you know. I I still got it pretty good at the end of the day, but you know, it's still a little different. But just worrying about you is dope, period. But I think that God is funny because I think that that's why being single is so important because you won't realize. Because I, when, obviously when I was paying my, just worrying about me, I used to be stressed out like, oh, I got to pay these bills. Oh, I got to buy groceries. Oh, I got to, uh, uh, uh. like, I always used to be complaining. Oh, I got to do my laundry. Oh, like, you know what I'm saying? And it was just me. And I think God is funny. He'll put you in a relationship to teach you, like, it wasn't so bad back then, right? You doing double laundry, you in there way longer, spending way more money. Like, hello, good morning. So it's like, it'll teach you, like, oh, okay, I get it. Like, it wasn't so bad, you know? And so if you single, pay attention to your singleness. And just some of the beauties of, you know, being single. And I understand that's what you say, if, you know, no, like falling in love is beautiful and it is. Um, and love is risky too, because I feel like a lot of times, a lot of people stay single because, you know, the fear of commitment. And um, love is risky. And it's something that you, if you want, you have to try. And it might fuck up, bitch. And it might hurt when it gets fucked up. But, I mean, what can you do? What can you really do? That's just what it is. But, um, yeah, if you're single right now, too, especially at this, like, when you're in your 30s, I think, like, maybe, you know, just basking it for now. Because, um, especially to be at 30, like, imagine if you would have got... No shade to get committed early. Imagine if you would've got committed early. Like, 21. Like, there's girls that, that always been doing a nigga laundry. Always been helping, you know, around with the house. Always been cooking for two. I could never. No shade. But just imagine, you know. So, I think it's, that's definitely, you know, something to think about. It's just about just self-preserving you. And also, too, when you start working on yourself... Whatever it is that you want for yourself is going to come. And I know that it sounds so cliche, but it is really going to come. You know, if, if you really want to be in a relationship, it'll come. Or whatever the case may be, you know. I personally pray. I, you know, I have my own Sierra prayers. And, um, ask for what you want. You know what I'm saying? If, if you do want a man, I mean, hey. Um, I think too, you know, like I said with the con, especially, especially when you get older, and, and that's always my biggest fear because, you know, I have friends and I have family that are single and it always bothers me when they talk about being single. It bothers me a lot. And when I say that, it's because I know I'm, I, I don't like people to be um, upset. <laughs> but I just feel like it, it, because we have no control over you we have no control over when we're gonna be our soulmates or whomever it's like just chill because at the end of the day a lot of these people yeah they're they're with someone and they're in a relationship or they're married or whatever the case may be but in 20 30 years you don't even know what what is all gonna be or what what it's all gonna end up so it's it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot to take in i understand but you know, hang in there. Focus on you. Being able to focus on you has has to be the dopest feature of being single, bitch. Literally, like even when I think about it, I'm just like, ugh, imagine. Like worrying about only you. That's not mad selfish, but that's dope as ever. Like that is the best. And I think, like I said, just that lusty feeling you get when you see uh, um, somebody you're attracted to. That's a different type of feeling when you're single, bitch. It just... I don't know. I ain't gonna front. Like, I don't know. <laughs> just like when you're single and you just hitting different things. Yeah. That's fun. <laughs> Come on. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Because you get to 
try different shapes, sizes, skin collections, styles, fashion. You know, you're doing a variety. You're doing a variety of different things. You're meeting a variety of different people, meeting different personalities and opinions. That's fucking dope. Okay? Shit. That's fun. Like, you're dating people, you're meeting people who look different, who have different life experiences, you're getting to learn people, you're getting to kiss different lips. <laughs> you're getting to touch different things. Let's talk about it. You, 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 you better embrace your singleness, sis. Okay? Because when you got to sit down with that one, because I think we too, we like to like make it seem like, oh, only men like on their bachelor party. Oh, this is your last piece of coochie. Nigga, this is my last piece of dick. Like, for real. Let's get in our bag. You know what I'm saying? Like, women always want to, well, back then, always feel like we got to be so pristine. No, sometimes you do be like, damn, this is it. This is my finale. That's why you better choose wisely, bitch. Like, this is my end. This is the last person I might potentially meet with. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's big. So, you know, if God give you the opportunity to have an extra two more years, single bitch, take them. And have fun with it. But do it right. Keep strapped up. Keep pilled up. Or whatever way you do it. They got all these new birth control, bitch. They be putting shit in your arm now. I heard about something, honey. I said, no, 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 ma'am. Mm hmm. I don't want to put nothing in my arm. <laughs> but, um, so, I mean, maybe that's a sign from the Lord to, you know, just keep having fun. And you'll run into him. Or whatever the case may be. And you, you start to, and I feel like, too, you, when you're single, to a pro of being single, is you enjoy things, uh, way more. Like, when I go out now, like, if I was to go to a party... It's not as fun as it used to be because I'm in a relationship. Like, so I just be feeling like sometimes, like, what am I doing here? Because, like, I can't, what am I benefiting from this? I understand you go to a party and dance, but it's just like, it's not the same when you're single. Like, you could dance, you're a little extra sexy, you're a little extra, extra, read all about it. You get to dance on other men, you know, and it's just like, you know, like, I get hyped, too, you know, sometimes when people try to talk to me, but, like, I can't even talk to them, so it's, like, whatever. But, like, your, your experience when you go out when you're single is so different from when you're not, when you're not single. It's a complete difference, like, a complete difference. Like, I feel like that's not talked about enough. Like, I feel like maybe when you go out when you're not single, you're probably trying to understand the culture more. In the essence, but I feel like when you go on vacation or you go to a club when you single, your outfit is different, your energy is different. Like you, you just like uh uh uh, like yeah yeah. You 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 feel like you got to be super confident because you want to get something or snatch something, and you you just you like you got nobody on you, tied on you. So yeah, your energy is different. It's so different. So I I think that's a pro. I mean, when you're committed and you go out, you can still definitely have fun. But I think a singles person's mentality when they go out and a person who's in a relationship, that type of fun is completely different. Completely different. So, it's so many benefits of being single. And to me, and like I said, I think, like, I feel like the, the biggest pro... With being committed with structure. And then I feel like the biggest pro, um, so there was a, a big pro for being committed. And I feel like there's a big con for being single. There's only one really big con. And I think that loneliness always creeps up on you. Like that's probably the biggest con. After that is stigmas and stuff like that or whatever the case may be. And so... Let's get into that real quick. Sometimes, you know, if you if you dating too much, it, it fucks with you when you constantly keep losing men, right? Because it's a form of rejection, you know. 
And you date this guy and it don't work out. Then you date this guy and it don't work out. Then you date this guy and it don't work out. And you start, it start fucking with you even though you, you supposedly supposed to be having fun. But it is a form of rejection and constantly hearing no. And constantly hearing, not no, but like getting ghosted or things constantly ending. It eventually does get to you. I, I get that too. That's definitely a con is that you, you're constantly going from next to next to next to next. It's a pro, but it also is a con. So I think the biggest con of like being single is like your mental health aspect it's like you gotta really you have like i said you gotta be kind of strategic with being single like this should be like single support groups like where you could just uplift each other and stuff because it, it has to be a balance with that single shit because it's like yes dating is mad fun but then when the shit hits the fan and y'all both getting on each other's nerves it's not as much fun anymore right and then next thing you know you want the next guy and then the same shit happens and you with the next guy and the same shit happens so I know that used to get to me when I was dating was like, damn, I can't keep a nigga for nothing. Like, all these motherfuckers is crazy. Like, I remember that big facts. So, I don't know. I don't know. But, um, yeah, like I said, I think the, the, the biggest pro is just of being single is the vibe. Does that make sense? There's a vibe and an energy of singleness. Like, if you're single, you can get in your bag. Like, big fucking facts. Um, it's just the energy and vibe. It's just the options and, and the energy. When you go out, you just like, hey, hey, hey. When you committed, you feel like... When you committed, you do a more a a a. When you sing, you do a a a a. Like, yeah, yeah, a a is extra. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like... It's just a certain vibe and an energy that you have when you're single. But the biggest con is the constant creep up of loneliness. That's the biggest con. Definitely. It's like you, it's always going to be a day out of the month where you're like, why am I lonely? Why am I single? I just want to be married. Please, God, please send me my husband. Like, you're going to always eventually do it, and it hurts when you get in that bag. So that's probably the biggest con. But if you are single and you want to get into a relationship, it's going to come. Keep praying on it, if that's what you want. If you want something, if you put God on it, he's going to give it to you. Okay? If that's what you really desire, don't give up. Keep going out, putting yourself out there. Keep doing what you're doing. I promise you, you're going to get it. If that's not what you desire, then by all means, keep being you. Okay? In your essence, honey. But, yes. That was another episode of Brit Says. I am excited. I am excited. I'm surprised. I thought next week, because I'm looking at my schedule, was the holiday episode. It's not. Oh, wow. That's going to be a good episode next week. Definitely tune in next week. And then the week after that, we're going to talk about the holidays, which I'm excited about. <laughs> this is funny. But, yes, that was, you know, the beauty of being single. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you can see the beauty of being committed, check the link in the description box below. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe. Leave a review if you're listening on you know, Apple Podcasts. Give me five stars. And I will see you guys next.